Hey everyone, in this video I'm gonna be talking about some Japanese trivia and nuances lost in the translation of the first episode of Kaiju Hachiko. First, let's start with some Japanese terms that were kept as is, Kaiju and Yoju. Some might be already familiar with Kaiju, since it's something that was popularized a lot since the very first Godzilla movie in 1954 and has now become a term used even in the West to talk about the type of movies with giant monsters. The word is written literally with strange suspicious and animal beast. The other one, Yoju, is unique to this series and uses the same last character as in Kaiju or animal beast, but starts with Yo that can mean remainder or leftover. Now let's start in chronological order of the episode. In the quick restaurant transition, there's a frame on the wall with a Yoji Jukubo, a four character compound, written on it from right to left, Shoumon Raifuku, an expression that can be translated to good fortune and happiness, will come to the home of those who smile. It's written with laugh, gate, come, and fortune. And the origin of the expression comes from a New Year's celebration game, Ukubalai. It's similar to the game Pin the Tail on the Donkey in the West. It's a game where you are blindfolded, but instead of a tail on a donkey, you need to pin some face parts on a blank face. And it often ends up in strange faces that makes people around laugh. The gate kanji can be linked to a home and to a family. And the style of the face use is often of a otafuku, literally a lot of good fortune. A very common mask that goes back a long time ago in Japanese culture. So we get a laughing family brings good fortune. The text that we can see on the road is Kaiju Senyo, Kaiju's dedicated use. The Japanese expression used originally in the sentence translated into This is our unsung battle against the Kaiju was using Hino Ataranai, a place where the sun doesn't hit. When Kafka gets the intestine duty, one of his co-workers says which was translated into have fun. This expression is commonly used when talking to someone that lost somebody recently, similar to my condolences in English. It comes from the kanji shu, which comes from the archaic word ureu, to worry, to be concerned, and the kanji kizu, wound, pain, resulting literally as something like I'm concerned about your pain. And of course, it can also be used, like in this context, in a comedic way, to make fun of someone who is going to endure something painful. The name of the cleaning company is written on the building and on the front of the uniforms. Monster Sweeper. Monster Sweeper. And we can also see MS Inc. on the back of the uniforms. In the locker room of the cleaning company, we can see some Daruma dolls with stuff written on them. They are a representation of the founder of the Zen tradition in Buddhism, Bodhidharma. They start with blank eyes, and you need to associate a goal or wish to it, and draw in the left eye. It then becomes a physical remainder of your goal, to encourage the success of it. Once the goal is achieved, you can draw in the second eye. The first big one on the left has on it Kaiju Juttai Dai Seiso, then Kaiju being cleaner, and Ore no Michi, my path, my journey. The middle one is Ken Koshindan Oru E, physical exam all A's, and the smallest one is Seiseki Toppo Nerai, 
aim for the top grade results. It comes down to exactly the same thing in both languages, but I thought that I could mention it just in case someone heard the number mismatch when Ichikawa talks about the age limit for the defense force. In the sum, it's 32, and in Japanese, it's 33, Sanju san. But it's just because in English, they say that the age limit is 32, and in Japanese, it's under 33 years old. On Mina's uniform, we can see the Izumi Tech logo that is using the kanji for exit or leave and cloud. And below it is written Tobatsucho. Tobatsu is subjugation using military force. And Cho is usually referring to a government office. Towards the end of the episode, when Kafka is lying in bed thinking about Mina while looking at his end, the English subtitle used the expression left in the dust, while the Japanese line was that could be interpreted more literally as she went somewhere my hand can't reach. This one is obviously open to interpretation both ways, but the thing that the monster said before diving into the mouth of Kafka and translated into found you can be a bit more ambiguous in Japanese since there's no subject you it's just the verb to discover, to find without necessarily pointing to Kafka himself and that's it for this episode I hope that you learned something new today and I'll see you all next time